Hello and welcome to our second video for DMA 10, Section 1, An Introduction to Integers. My name is Dane Peterson, Math Success Coach at CCCC, and we'll be wrapping up Section 1 in this video here today. So just to review, last time uh, we covered terms and definitions for integers, we looked at the number line, and we practiced graphing integers on the number line. In this video, we're going to look at the inequality symbols, absolute value, and thinking of negatives as opposites. Let's look at the different inequality symbols. The first one that we're going to look at is less than. It's a little caret that points to the left, and that means that the number on the left is smaller than the number on the right. So we might use something like 1 is less than 3, because 1 is indeed smaller than 3. The second symbol that we're going to look at is greater than, or a caret pointing to the right. And we might use something like negative uh, 1 is greater than negative 2. Because remember, negative 1 would be further to the right on our number line, and therefore it's greater uh, than negative 2. Uh, the third symbol is less than or equal to, which means that the number on the right is either um, greater or equal to the number on the left. So we might have something like uh, 2 is less than or equal to uh, 5. That would give us a true statement. We could also have something like 3 is less than or equal to 3, because 3 is equal to 3, so it, it satisfies one of those different conditions. Next is greater than or equal to, so we could say that um, negative 2 is greater than or equal to negative 4. Or we could say negative 2 is greater than or equal to negative 2, because both of those are, are true statements. And the last one that we'll look at for inequality symbols is not equal. So we would say maybe something like 1 is not equal to 2. That's a true statement. Now there are a few different tricks that we can use to help us remember how the inequality signs work. So if we were given a problem like 3 and 5, okay, and we wanted to see which symbol we would place in there, less than or greater than, um, I like to think of the inequality signs as an alligator. And the alligator's hungry and he always wants to eat the bigger of the number. So his mouth would open to the larger the two numbers, so he would get the biggest, biggest meal to eat. Some people I've seen before, and I think this is kind of cool, think of it as Pac-Man. Okay, and Pac-Man wants to eat the, the biggest number. So those are a couple tips to uh, help you figure out which inequality sign to use when you're trying to place them between two different numbers. I know they're a little silly, but if they're silly and they work, then who cares? Now let's do some practice. Uh, for these first two practice problems, we're going to place the proper inequality in the blank between the two numbers. So we're comparing the numbers 5 and negative 7. Uh, remember my trick there before about the alligators. We want to eat the bigger of these two numbers. So we're going to open towards the 5, okay, and then point towards the 7, because 5 is greater than negative 7. Okay. For our second problem, we have negative 10 and negative 9. We want to open towards the larger of these two numbers. So um, remember, negative 9 is farther to the right on the number line than negative 10 is. If we draw our number line, 0 might be here. This would be negative 9. Negative 10 is somewhere over here. So negative 9 is farther to the right, therefore greater than the 10. So we're going to open towards the negative 9 and point towards the 10. Next, we're going to see if these are, uh, are true or false. So the first one states that negative 2 is less than or equal to negative 7. Uh, that's a false statement because negative 2 would be somewhere over here negative 7 farther to the left. So negative 2 is actually going to be greater than or equal to. Uh, second statement, 1 is greater than or equal to negative 1. That's true because 1 is farther to the right on the number line, so it is greater. We're opening towards the bigger number. And our last statement, negative 11 is greater than or equal to negative 11, is also true because of that little caveat there about the or equal to part. Since these two are equal, we do get a true statement. Uh, for that example there. Now let's introduce the concept of absolute value. Uh, a definition for the absolute value is that it is the, uh, the 
distance a number is from 0. So we have an example here. The absolute value of negative 3 is 3. And we use these little vertical lines here uh, to show uh, the symbol for absolute value. So this would read as the absolute value of negative 3, which is indeed 3. Let's see why that is. If we were going to plot this on, on our number line, maybe we'll put uh, 0, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. Okay, so negative 3 falls here. Our definition says that the absolute value of this number is its distance from 0. Okay, so that's going to be 1, 2, 3 spaces from 0. So the absolute value of negative 3 is 3. Okay, now let's do these practice problems down at the bottom. Um, the absolute value of 3, that would be over here on the number line. 1, 2, 3, 3 spaces away from 0. So we'd say the absolute value of 3 is 3. And once we take the absolute value, we can get rid of those, those vertical lines. Next, the absolute value of negative 4 is going to be 4. It's 4 spaces with 0, so we just write it like that. And the absolute value of 0 um, is going to be 0, right? It's 0 spaces away from itself. So except for the special case of 0, because 0 is neither negative nor positive, uh, the absolute value of any number is always going to be a positive number. Now let's introduce the concept of thinking of negative numbers of opposites of their positive counterparts. So we say two numbers that are the same distance from 0 on the number line, um, but on opposite sides of that number line, are called opposite numbers, or we can think them, of them as negative numbers. So for example, on this number line here, if we've got 0, 1, 2, 3, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, we could think of the numbers 2 and negative 2 as opposites because they're both uh, two spaces away from 0. 1, 2, 1, 2. Um, another way to think of that is that the opposite of 2 is negative 2 same distance away from 0. Again, uh, 4 and negative 4 would be opposites as well. If we had negative 4 over here and 4 over here, they're the, both the same distance away from 0 as they are from one another, so we would call these numbers opposites. Um, sometimes you might also hear these uh, referred to as additive inverses. Let's look at some other property properties of opposites or negative numbers. Notice the number line here. Um, the scale is drawn with a scale of what? Five. That means from each iteration there's five spaces between each of them. Okay, so we're going to use this number line to help us here. The first number that they li have listed is 15. That's over here way on the right on our number line. And then we want to find the opposite of that. Okay, to find the opposite of that number we said that an opposite is the same as the negative of that number. So we can put a negative in front of that, okay, and we get the opposite is negative 15 over here, both 15 places away from 0. There's 15 places from there to there, and 15 from there to there, okay. Now, let's look at our second number, negative 10. Again, to take the opposite, we would put a negative in front of it. Um, we're going to put some parentheses in there so we can see that there's two negatives. So we would have the negative of negative 10. So if we start at the negative 10, the opposite of that, or negative negative 10, would be positive 10. So see how these two negative signs, here and here, make a positive 10 over here. And last, we have the special case of 0. Um, if we're going to take the opposite 0, we might put a negative in front of that, but we know that 0 is neither negative or positive, so the opposite of 0 is just going to be 0. 0 is the same place uh, is zero places from itself, so the opposite of zero is going to be zero. So to review, to take the opposite or find the negative of a number, okay, we put two negative, we put a, an additional negative in front of that, and if it's two negatives, like it is in the second case over here, that number is a positive. Let's do some practice. We're going to find the opposite of the numbers listed here on the right. Remember, we're going to stick a, a negative sign in front of it to do that. So if we're given the number 57, the opposite of 57 is going to be negative 57. Okay. The opposite of negative 112 is going to be negative negative 112. And since we have two negatives, that'll turn into a positive 112. 
So the opposite of negative 112, or negative negative 112, is positive 112. The opposite of the absolute value of 2. Well, first we should probably find what the absolute value of 2 is. The absolute value is how many spaces 2 is, is from 0, so that's going to be positive 2 spaces. So the opposite of that is going to be negative 2. Okay, And then the um, absolute value of negative 17 is going to be 17. So the absolute value of that, is, or the opposite of that, pardon me, is going to be negative 17. Mm -hmm. And this is important, because sometimes in this class you might see something like this. Negative, negative 17, absolute value of negative 17. We're taking the absolute value of negative 17, and then it's opposite here. So we have to remember to take the absolute value first, which is the positive 17, and then include the, carry over the negative sign in front of it to get negative 17. So that finishes up the material that we're going to cover in section 1 of DMA 10. Just to review the things that we covered, we looked at the terms and definition of our integers. We looked at the number line and graphing numbers on the number line. Uh, we reviewed the inequality symbols, talked about absolute value, and finding the negatives or opposites of different numbers. Next, um, after you've finished your homework for this section, feel free to start the videos for DMA 10 section 2, um, and we'll start looking at how to add and subtract positive and negative numbers.